Hello friends, this video on thermodynamics part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to un explain the terms system and surroundings, to differentiate between different kind of systems we have, closed, open and isolated system. We will also explain the internal energy in terms of work and heat. We will state the first law of thermodynamics. We will calculate the energy changes as the work and heat contribution in the chemical system. We will focus more on chemical system because it's chemistry. We will explain some functions u and h. We will also uh, derive some formula between delta u and delta h. We will explain what these terms mean. We will um, measure these values experimentally using calorimeter. We will define the different uh, state, standard states for delta h. We'll calculate the enthalpy change for various types of reaction. We'll uh, talk about the Hess law. We'll uh, differentiate between the extensive and intensive properties. We'll define spontaneous and non-spontaneous process. We'll explain entropy. We'll also explain Gibbs energy change. And we'll establish relationship between delta G and the spontaneous. And the we will discuss all these things in this chapter. So before we will start, the first thing that should come to our mind is why should we study thermodynamics? What thermodynamics gives us? So if you see this typical vehicle which we use in our life, maybe it's a bus, maybe a car or, or bike, in all these what you see, we put gasoline or petrol or diesel. So this uh, petrol or diesel is nothing but my chemical energy. Right, so this is my chemical energy, and what we do is we convert this chemical energy into mechanical energy. So, if you see, this chemical energy gets converted into mechanical energy. Correct. So, if you see what the happening here is chemical is getting converted into mechanical energy, but internally, if you see the chemical energy, the petrol burns and chemical energy converts into heat energy if you see the internal process this chemical gets converted into heat energy and this heat gets converted into mechanical energy this is if you see the internal working of the uh, bus or any engine you must have studied this in physics so there is a conversion of energy from chemical to heat to mechanical energy so if you see the train also the same thing is there if the train runs on electric the electric energy is coming into uh, mechanical energy. If you see this uh, burner we have here also if you see my electric energy electric energy gets converted to again heat energy right. So if you see this battery in battery what happens here also we have this uh, when you say lithium ions battery it has chemicals. So here chemical energy gets converted into electric energy. So if you see refrigerator, here also my electric energy gets converted to heat energy. If you see this, when you burn something, here also this wood is nothing but a chemical compound, right? And this gets converted into heat and light energy. Same thing when you cook something in kitchen, there also if you see the chemical energy, that is um, uh, LPG gas we use, uh, that converts into, or wood also sometimes we use, uh, that gets converted into heat energy. So if you see here in all these what we see? We see conversion of energy. Conversion of and thermodynamics deals with this. Correct. So in thermodynamics we deal with all this conversion how the energy is converted from this form to this form what is the efficiency how much is lost whether it's feasible to convert this energy this energy, into that energy. We'll talk about all these things in thermodynamics. Correct. So before we start, let's talk about various source of energy. The various source. The first basic source is solar energy. In fact, all other energy are, I'll say, child of this solar energy. So this is the critical source, solar energy. Then we have nuclear energy and we have chemical energy. So, but I I personally feel that the solar energy is the parent, but generally we classify 
energy to these three uh, energy, solar energy, nuclear energy, and chemical energy. And we'll be focusing more on chemical energy because uh, you are studying this thermodynamics chapter in chemistry. If you study the same chapter in physics, maybe we'll be uh, focusing more on the engines and this kind of stuff. But here we'll be uh, talking more about the chemical reactions. Correct. So if you see the chemical uh, reactions are associated with energy change. If you see the chemical reaction is linked with energy change. So since I told my thermodynamics talks about energy change and since we have seen this also, if you burn something, for example, as a chemical reaction, it's energy change here. Right? You put sodium in water, it burns. There's a chemist, um, what do you call it? Energy change. So energy change happens, right? The iron rust. There's a chemical reaction, there's energy change. So energy change is linked to chemical reactions. And since chemical reaction is the basic foundation of chemistry, so we have to study thermodynamics in chemistry also. And here we'll be focusing more on the chemical reaction part of the thermodynamics. Right? And the energy may appear as heat light, electrical or work energy. So if you see in this case, it um, the chemical energy is going to work energy. Here it is chemical to electrical energy. Here if you see light energy and heat energy. Also, energy is consumed to break bond. This is something which you have studied in the last chapter that when you break a bond, you need energy and energy is released when bonds are formed. So if you see there are different kind of bonds I have here. This is my hydrogen bond uh, with water molecule. This is my sodium chloride crystal crystal structure bonds, uh, ionic bond. So uh, when, you, when you break a bond, you need energy. And when you uh, release a bond, uh, when you, sorry, when you, when you form a bond, energy release. So, so when you talk about energy release or energy absorb, so this happens in two scenarios in, chemi in chemistry. One is the chemical reactions. And if you go deep into the chemical reaction, if you go to the atomic level, the molecular level, uh, not the atomic, the molecular level, because you talk about the molecules here. The molecular level, uh, we, need, we know that bond formation gives energy and bond uh, breakage consumes energy. So here are different scenarios where we will uh, be focusing on the thermodynamics part where we talk about the bond of creation, bond breakage, the chemical reaction, because all these things uh, involve chemical energy change, and that is thermodynamics. Okay. So we must be having some doubts now. How to determine whether a chemical reaction will occur or not? For example, I say, I say H2 plus O2 gives me H2O. The question is whether this reaction will occur or not. I can write a balanced reaction for anything, but the question is whether this will react or not. When I say neon plus oxygen, I can just write a balanced reaction, let's suppose as I in O2. The question is will it occur or not? So those kind of doubts you must be having, right? So will it occur or not? And if it occurs, what is that? something which drives a chemical reaction because in science we know that everything has a cause. If I'm saying hydrogen is reacting with oxygen to give the water, why it is reacting? What is the driving factor? Right? And to what extent the chemical reaction will proceed? For example, if I say I have 10 grams of hydrogen, 80 grams of oxygen, how much water I'll get if it if it occurs and let's suppose we know the force behind it, how much water I'll get Will it get consumed? Which one, get, uh, which one will get consumed first? Which one will remain? How much water will get? Look at the questions I have. I don't know the answers. So thermodynamics will help us give all these answers. Whether the reaction is feasible or not. If feasible, why it is happening? And to what extent will happen? So let's define thermodynamics once again. Thermodynamics, as the name states, thermo plus dynamics. Thermo means heat, the word in blue, and dynamics will work. That means, usually talk about you convert heat to work, right? So you see, the definition is, is the branch of science which is concerned with heat 
and its relation to energy involved. So where heat is linked with energy and work, and there's a big science for that, and the science is called thermodynamics. For example, if you take a big jar of water and you heat this, you heat this, what will happen is the energy of these uh, water molecules will go high. Also, if you let's suppose close with the lid. And then if you see the lid will come up, it will go up and you can use that actually. And you can use this actually to perform some work. If you see the steam engine works on the factor, you have you, the burn, the coal and the uh, heat of the water and the water pressure, the, the vapor pressure helps in doing some work. So all these things involve thermodynamics where we have heat, with that heat we get energy and work. Correct. And please note, we will focus on the chemical part of the thermodynamics and that is called chemical thermodynamics where you generate heat from the chemical reactions. Okay, so we'll, in this uh, chemistry version of thermodynamics, we'll talk about chemical reactions, you know, whether the reaction is visible or not and how much heat it generates and how can we convert that heat to work and energy. Correct. So we will derive a relation also between heat, work and energy. And please note, thermodynamics deal at the macroscopic level. I will discuss this once again. So uh, uh, macroscopic means that you, know, you have a lot of molecules and you see a lot of molecules in one shot at that level. You don't see the atoms. You don't, you don't bother about the atoms or the uh, neutrons, photons, electrons. You minimum thing is you see at least a bunch of molecules at that level it works it doesn't work if you uh, see one atom and then you try to apply thermodynamics it doesn't work it works only at that level we'll explain this once again and it is not concerned how the energy transformation takes place. it is not concerned how the energy is transforming also it is not concerned about the rate of the energy transformation it is only concerned about the initial and final state only initial and final state it is concerned so just uh, we will touch upon all these things in the next few slides also. Just this, uh, these four points are really critical. I wanted to reiterate on this that uh, thermodynamics deals only in the macroscopic level. It is not concerned, not concerned how the energy transformation takes place. It is not concerned the rate of energy transformation takes place. It is only concerned about the initial and the final state. We'll talk about all these things. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.